Well, hello everyone. So this is an acrylic and oil painting, meaning that I started with acrylics and I finished with oils. I found this cool reference photo on unsplash.com and I decided that I would do a sketch and change some of it so that it would be an autumn inspired portrait painting. I then gessoed my canvas with a Victorian gray gesso and I transferred my sketch onto my canvas. This is a painter's mall stick and it's very helpful for for steadying your hand as you paint in some of the small details. So when we look at our reference photo, we see that there are reddish tones on the left side, purplish grayish tones around the eye, and yellowish around the right side of the face where the warm sun is hitting her face. So I'm going to start in with the golden open acrylics, moving with the plane shifts and getting some of those reddish tones on the left side of the face, and then working in towards the purpler tones as we work towards the eye. And please forgive the sound of my voice. I have been a bit under the weather. Um, uh, I've been pretty sick actually the past week or so. Um, my son, who I've given nothing but love to his whole entire life, decided that he wanted to infect me. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty congested at the moment. But anyway, back to the painting. So the darkest darks are kind of really important to, for me anyway, to start with because it helps to use it as a guide for where my brightest highlights are going to be. So I know it starts to look really weird with all of these, these just really dark tones on one side of the face, but it starts to balance out as I work toward the highlights on the other side of the face. When working with the Golden Open Acrylics, I did gesso the canvas darker than white because they are more transparent than regular acrylics, but they work really well as an underpainting for an oil painting, and that's kind of one of the things that I figured out over time. Um, they also work well as an underpainting if you're going to finish your painting with um, more Golden Open Acrylics as well. There is, however, a bit of a caveat with the Golden Open Acrylics is that in order for you to see what color they actually end up being, you have to wait for them to dry, and they do take longer to dry than regular acrylics. So putting in these patches of color, um, it's going to dry a little bit differently, but it's an underpainting. It's not the finished painting, so it's kind of just getting your blocks of color in, blocking in the color, and finding out where your darks and your lights are going to be, and the contrast, and all of that happy stuff. So all of those blocks of colors do help to form the structure of the face, and that's why I paint with blocks of color as opposed to blending everything together. Um, it ends up making it look like a more realistic portrait when you use the blocks of color constructing the shape of the face. I remember when I started out painting and I wanted to automatically just blend, 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 blend. And it took a, a long time for me to realize that blending is okay for some applications, but when it comes to portrait painting, it's actually more helpful to have colors just kind of stacked side by side, as opposed to blending all of your colors and just creating a gradient for everything. Um, it makes for a more painterly um, appeal, and it just, I don't know, it, it has a really great effect when you paint in blocks of colors, as opposed to blending everything together, working with plane shifts and just making your brush strokes go in, in the direction of those plane shifts makes for a more dynamic portrait than it does if you have smoothed out everything in your painting. I mean, smoothing out certain things, blurring certain things together is really effective when it comes to backgrounds, when it comes to things that aren't necessarily, you don't have to have detail within every part of your painting, but having things not blended in specific areas, especially when it comes to using color to make the stru structure of a face, um, that's something that took a little bit of practice and something that took me a long time to learn. But once I started really putting that into practice, it was extremely helpful. See, I started out with um, black and white. I did charcoal portraits for a really long time. 
And so when I started painting, I didn't understand plane shifts and blocking in color because using color and using black and white are two completely different animals. And I was used to creating gradients with a smudge stick with charcoal. So learning how to paint with blocks of colors was actually really, really difficult for me. One of my most commonly asked questions in the comment section is why I finish my paintings with oil paint and not acrylics. And is it even possible to paint acrylic and oil on the same canvas? Yes, it is, as long as you paint acrylics first and as long as you let them dry completely before you start applying oils. You just can't do it the other way around. You can't paint acrylic on top of oil. So... Um, the reason why I like to use oils is I, I love oil paint. I love the effects of oil paint. I love how you can really drive home realism with oil paint. It's much harder to do with acrylics, although with the invention of golden open acrylics, you can get a similar effect. But in my opinion, oil is king as far as portraits are concerned. I love acrylics for creating abstract backgrounds. I also like them for creating some landscape backgrounds but as far as portraits go um i'm an oil girl uh for the refining part of portraits i just find that they are beautiful um they are not flat like acrylic paints they don't dry flat like acrylic paints and you will get a far more realistic effect i use mediums such as um, i use safflower oil as well as a galca gel medium by gamblin with my oil paints to help them dry a little bit faster. The safflower oil is to thin the paints out um, a little bit and the Galka gel uh, helps them dry quicker. So the background is going to change the mood of this painting entirely and I'm using a turquoise by Gamblin and mixing it with a titanium white in order to get this beautiful color in the background which is going to really complement all of the orange that is going to be in the painting but you see that it suddenly transforms into daytime in this painting and you can almost feel the warm sun hitting her face and that is just this small thing by putting in this background and it it just changes the whole entire feel of the painting after the background is in I did let that dry overnight because that was mixed with um, Galka gel in order to get it to dry and then I can put those wisps of hair kind of going out and blowing in the breeze there so the leaves um, <laughs> I have never painted like detailed leaves before and so this was a little bit kind of difficult and I was like oh man you know I should have left the leaves white so that I could use transparent oils on top of them and really get those bright vibrant colors so I think it took a little bit more work for me to get the leaves to look um, like leaves and if I were to do it again, I definitely wouldn't have put that under painting of uh, transparent red oxide with the acrylics on them. I probably would have painted them white and then went over with transparent oils and then went in with the opaques. But, you know, this is how uh, the learning process takes place. But we're almost at the end of this painting and I really enjoyed this painting process. So if you would like to see a video on how I sketch and transfer my sketches onto my canvas, please hit that button above and that will take you to that video. Um, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the whole process. I really did. And hopefully my next video I will be feeling well again and not quite so much like a puddle of warm sick. Um, this is kind of a disgusting thought. Sorry about that. But anyway, I will see you next time, guys. I love you and take care of yourself. Be well. Stay healthy. Stay healthy.